Aloha everyone, I'm geologist Philip Ong, our Friday Monolo update, April 23rd, 2021. This is the most recent update from the USGS. So the new information here is this earthquake swarm occurred southwest of Mauna Loa Summit on April 16th and 17th. And so this, that cluster is right in here. There is one larger event, which was this one. It was a 3.2 um, in that same range. And lots of small ones following after that. So the majority of them are small that kind of follow. And during the past week, HVO seismometer has recorded approximately 175 small magnitude. Nearly all less than three and all in that same typical range. So for the past month, you can see uh, a summary of what essentially is the last three earthquake swarms. We've had three weeks in a row of earthquake clustering in this same area. You can see three clear spikes here. There is one swarm, second one, third one. Right. And so the key thing here is that we're not having a swarm that's ongoing and staying at high rates the entire time. So we're, we're spiking up and we're going back down to our background. Our background now is higher than before. That's an elevated background, but we're still going back to background. And then we're going up and back to background and then coming up and back to background. So that's the pattern we're seeing here. It's, it's pretty beautiful to see that in the data like that. Uh, earthquakes per day plot here. This one reaching 120. This one reached 70 in one day. This one reached 60 in one day, right? But we're kind of counting the entire tail end of it as well as part of the swarm. That whole thing. So if we look at the depth versus time once again here on the bottom, we can see corresponding to the same periods of time above it. There is that top swarm right in here, earliest one. And here it is coming in. Second one in here. That's that swarm right in there. Looks like there was a smaller one that preceded it right in there. Maybe it didn't, didn't get quite that tension, but or maybe it's all lumped together as one big. In any case, three, three different peaks there. And importantly, going back to background. We'll be more concerned when this doesn't go back to background. All right, so here's the beginning about a month ago. First wave comes in. There it is. Here. And a little gap. So some background activity. There's our upper southwest rift zone. Here's our second pulse coming through. And finally, our third pulse right in there at the end. A few more upper southwest rift earthquakes as well. We're going to look at a, a quick couple of diagrams from this paper, the Mauna Loa summary of the 75 and 84 activity here. But essentially what you have is a zone of, of no seismicity. So they're drawing squares as a certain depth here. These are all earthquakes. And these little cross signs, these little plus signs are also all earthquakes. So those are all happening in brittle rock above the magma chamber right in here and off to the northwest side over here. And you don't get quite as many over here on the east side. They are there, but they're not quite as concentrated. They're distributed across the whole southeast flank, it turns out. Because when we look at the volcano of Mauna Loa, it's got quite a light to its northwest, and it really can't push and move in that direction at all. So any pressure of the magma chamber it's pushing towards Kuala Lai and Kona it seems to pinch and catch in this zone right in here. So that's that zone that we're seeing flare off over here and here. So essentially it relates directly to the magma chamber pushing on it from the side, right? That's kind of and maybe pushing pushing more to the side, perhaps from this deeper zone over there or the lower part. And when it gets to these shallower parts of the magma area, then it's pushing more up. And that's when you see these other earthquakes on the summit kind of above. So this is that zone when we're looking, we're looking at that cross-section. The cross-section was going across this way with a magma chamber somewhere under here, that long dike reservoir as well in there, and it pushing towards Hualai, towards the southeast here. Right? So if I move in this direction, you can see Hualai is right up here, and this is Hualai Volcano. And really, you can't push this flank in that direction. There's a whole backstop right here, a big doorstop. And can't slide out of the way. Whereas if we go to the Kilauea side, and Kilauea moves, so therefore Mauna Loa can also move that direction. All right, so this is showing the past two months now. So we have that little cluster, I'm zoomed out a little bit, happening right in here, northwest of the summit. But you also see early on, there's quite a lot of shallow activity, all essentially above sea level in this summit and upper southwest rift zone right in here. We get that upper Kawiki swarm happening right in here. This is a whole Kawiki area right in here. And that area is all activating. We see 
couple of those big south flank earthquakes, 4.2, 3.9 happening down in here near Pahala. And so that, those, those are the areas that we're dealing with. Let me zoom in here in a summit a little more. It's starting to sequence. We have pressure above the magma chamber right here. And then we shift to having flank earthquakes. I'm zoomed in so you can't see them. But once the flank earthquakes initiate, then we start seeing pressure pushing to the sides and less so up. And that's kind of what we're seeing, a change from pushing up to pushing to the side. The last two months is this section right here on the right. So from February till now is this, era, is this era of elevated earthquakes per week where we've been mostly above 100 earthquakes a week for most of the time, a couple exceptions, um, which is different than that period before then, right? You see before then our background was actually quite a bit lower. So this is what we mean by the background levels and then an elevated background level here. Certainly adjusting quite a lot. If we come into the GPS here, this is the distance across the caldera, north to south. So in meters here on the left, and this is a one-year plot left to right. So let's zoom in here to the right end of this graph. Over the last week, we've continued essentially a slow extension here, spreading north and south over here after we've gone through that two, two to three week contraction period. Just to show you guys this five year plot, this most recent contraction we had is the biggest one we've had within the whole past five years. And the one we had previous to that was the second biggest in the last five years. So if we're having more change certainly here in the last few months um, than we've had any time in the past five years, at least more dramatic, right? There's been a lot of, a lot of change happening, but not of this variety like this. This is now back to uh, September 2018, so just as the Kilauea eruption was ending, right, um, which is was a, a period when Mauna Loa began to adjust, coming out of its its uh, relatively quiet time while while Kilauea was erupting. So Kilauea is over here, and this reminds me that of course Mauna Loa doesn't exist in a vacuum. Kilauea did erupt, is erupting now, right, in 2020. So it is also, there's some, some dynamic happening here between Mauna Loa pushing and Kilauea pushing as well. So that's not to be ignored. Uh, we're seeing, see early on, a lot of summit activity. Or also that northwest flank. You can see a little bit better with this longer period of time, this whole area of Kawiki is also adjusting, right? So here it's spread out, it's spread out over that whole area to the east and to the west. It's all clustered in one zone. There's a little bit of, there's a second patch here, there's a layer patch down in here, which is also adjusting. You can see, see some flaring happening in there as well. Zoom it out a little bit and hopefully you guys can see more so of the south flank pattern right in here how much summit's going on, right? We're seeing that cl cloud at the summit. We don't see wings into any of the rift zones, anything like that. Uh, instead, we see pressure aside here and here. Right? That's because we have this long dike body that's a, this orientation that's filling in. So it's pushing above, it's pushing to the left, it's pushing to the right, and it's just filling in. And as it pushes to the right, this thing's giving and moving. And this one is not moving as much, which is why you see these earthquake swarms. On this side, it moves. Have this big earthquakes, the 3.9, the 4.3 over here. There was a on March 10th, there was a 4.2 somewhere in here on the Loa south flank that went that way. The contraction we've seen at the summit, Mauna Loa, over the last last month or so now, is the largest in the last five years, as we pointed out earlier. So that's clearly we're adjusting a lot. We're adjusting contraction at the top. We're you know we're adjusting lots of earthquakes all around. That's this whole process that we've described in the past here. Right, where we're not seeing a full-on eruptive cycle, but we're seeing a smaller version, incremental version of that, right? Where magma comes in, right, it presses on the flanks, the flanks fail through an earthquake. That leads to magma coming, filling the area, more earthquakes at the summit, and then possibly pushing to the sides, right, and over and over and over again, right? The magma moving perhaps into, the, into other areas of the rift zone as the volcano expands and as flanks move out of the way, it essentially creates space for the magma to fill underground without actually erupting to the surface. That's really the information we have, right? There's not a lot else going on there. Um, it's interesting to note that there's no heat, there's no gas, the tote's not really showing anything that different. Um, of course, this paper in 2005 was really focused on 
the big earthquakes that can occur on the flanks and what big earthquakes can then lead to big adjustments and that's when you get an actual eruption. So what we're looking for still is if we're seeing this pattern of it's adjusting a little bit, adjusting a little bit, adjusting a little bit, do we get to the point where it adjusts a lot, we get a big earthquake. We still haven't even got that big earthquake as that first uh, indicator. We haven't even got that yet. So that's where we are now.